Hi everybody, my name is Phil Harris, also expat aviator, and I'm a VATSIM controller at the Atlanta Arctic in the USA. I'm going to show you how to get set up on VRC for the new audio for VATSIM system. So, the first thing, you have to update and install a new version of VRC. Right now I'm running a beta version, um, you can see that I downloaded a VRC setup beta. However, you'll need to go to the VATSIM website, download the very latest version of VRC, and get that installed. The second thing you need to download is a separate client called Audio for VATSIM, and I'll show you the install for that now. Super simple installer, the usual, just accept the defaults. Let it launch, and in my case, there's a newer version available, so I'm going to let it update. Do the install wizard one more time. And there we go, that's now running. First thing to do, go to settings. Now this has remembered my settings from a previous install, but really it's as simple as fill in the VATSIM ID, your password, choose your microphone device and your output device. Output volume is exactly what you'd expect. And the most important part of this new client is you must set up your mic volume using this slider so that your voice bounces mostly in the green. So you see mine is a little bit uh, a little bit too far to the right at the moment. Let's back it off slightly. Okay, and let's just talk normally. Yep, that seems pretty good. If it's too low down here in the blue, you're going to be too quiet on the network. If you're way up in the red, it's going to be super distorted. There's a checkbox to disable the realistic ATC audio effects. This takes away all the VHF and HF simulation. This really should only be used if, for some reason, you'd need a super clear signal. Push to talk is exactly what you'd expect, and you can ignore these simulator settings. These are for the pilots. And note that the pilots use exactly the same client as the controllers if they're using the standalone. Close out of this, and let's connect to the network. This part is exactly the same. So first of all, let's go on as uh, Atlanta Center. I like to make sure my visibility center is correct. Okay. Connect with the new client. And you'll see that it's picked up that I'm Atlanta Center, but I've not primed a frequency yet. So, Atlanta Center. This is as it would be before. The frequency is as important as ever. But the Vox server and the Vox channel should be left completely blank. There's no need to put anything in here anymore. Let's prime center. You see it also ticks the transmit and receive. And you do not and should not click these headset and speaker buttons anymore because this separate client is handling all the audio for you. Now, if we wait just a moment, you'll see this is now updated to 132.975, transmit and receive, and we're pretty much good to go now. I can press my transmit button, TX lights up, and uh, that really is all you need to know to get up and running. But there are a few more things, uh, interesting features that you should know about. The first one, you have a few controls up here to make this nice and small, perhaps have the frequency window open or back to as it was before. And there's a new part of the voice for audio for VATSIM called transceivers. And you can see that Atlanta Center has been picked up as a transceiver source for VATSIM database. And there are 26 transceivers. So what are these transceivers? There are a few useful web links here. The first one is a transceiver map. And essentially, each one of these circles is a transceiver, as it would be in the real world. And the circle is the coverage area for aircraft that would be on the ground in that location. So as you can imagine, this is based on the power of the transceiver, its height above ground, things like that. These are defined by your facility engineer. So if none pop up for the position you're working, um, assuming it's some sort of large area position like a center or London control perhaps, if they don't pop up, then you should talk to your facility engineer. Now there comes a question, if there's a pilot that's sitting on the ground in one of these gaps, maybe there's a small local airport there, they will not be able to hear you, and you will not be able to hear them. You'll see that aircraft, when they appear, they have a different sized circle based on the altitude they're at. 
You'll need an aircraft, say, in this area to get to about 4,000 feet before you're going to hear one another. There is another map which is arguably slightly more useful. And here you can see the same circles, but here's an aircraft, and his ring is pretty small, so it looks like he's on the ground at JFK. Okay, the test network is pretty quiet this evening. But there's one other thing you should know. This button here is called cross-couple. Let's take the example that we've got one aircraft flying in the Birmingham, Alabama area, and another aircraft up by Greensboro. Now, when I transmit, I'll transmit across all of these circles. Both pilots will hear me. If the Greensboro guy makes a transmission, because his ring will not be overlapping the guy flying down in Birmingham, then they will not hear one another. There is a way, however, by pressing this cross-couple button, that any transmission made by the Greensboro guy gets repeated across my transceivers, and the guy down in Birmingham will hear him as well, and vice versa. So that's cross-coupling. As you can imagine, some, some systems in the real world have this cross-coupling and some don't. So oftentimes there'll be someone talking to a center frequency that you can't hear and you just hear the controller replying. So that can be kind of realistic. There is another thing that you can do. You can add multiple frequencies. So let's say I also want to cover uh, Atlanta Tower top down. Right now it doesn't know the frequency, so I'll type it in. And I want to transmit and receive. If I just wanted to monitor, say, another controller, then I would just leave the receive button. If I needed to take over, if you were stepping away, I can transmit as well. Now you should note these are not voice rooms in the traditional way that VATSIM used to work. Every single frequency that's available to the pilots on VATSIM are open for audio all of the time. So there's no opening a room, there's no a controller owning a room, there's none of that anymore. The frequencies are all open, so anyone can tune to any frequency and just begin talking. So with that in mind, there's one other thing you need to do when you add these frequencies in VRC. Here's my tower link. I do need to tick transmit and receive here. If I don't do that, then I'm not going to get the text from 119.1. Now, whilst I've got two frequencies, pilots in their um, pilot clients, they are only going to see my primed frequency at the time of go live. They will not see that I'm listening and transmitting in at the Atlanta Tower frequency. You know, it would be up to me as a controller to say, Call me back on Atlanta Tower 119.1. They will only see the frequency that you prime. And you can keep going like this. So ground as well. And I would actually have to configure ground in here as well. But, uh, you know, that would be as easy as let's take over this one. No voice server, no channel, save, and tick, and we're good to go. Now, you can imagine the situation where somebody on the ground transmits, and only other people tuned to 21.9 will hear that pilot. The people on tower and the people on center will not hear them. All three will hear me when I transmit, because I've got all three of my transmits uh, ticked. If you tick all three of these cross-couple buttons, now that the guy, when he transmits on ground, his voice will repeat across the tower frequency and across the center frequency. As you can imagine, this is going to avoid people stepping on each other without knowing. So as a controller, I could have someone calling me on center and on tower and on ground if I didn't have any of these checked. And in fact, I could have two people on center at different parts of the Arctic calling me and not hearing one another. So in theory, this could get confusing pretty quickly. Now, the recommendation at first is just to start out with one frequency and get used to the new system. Different Arctics and different divisions, they're going to have to figure out how they're going to handle this multiple frequency top-down controlling and exactly how this is going to work. So just keep that in mind. I also want to show you what happens when the frequency is not defined um, in the transceiver source database. So let's disconnect. Uncheck everything in here.
And let's log on as tower this time. So you should wait a few seconds before clicking this connect button, otherwise you'll get an error. There we go, it's picked up tower. Check tower. Just confirm my visibility center. Now wait a few seconds and this will change to the tower frequency. There we go. You'll see now it says controller client and transceiver count is one. This means that the facility engineer for the Atlanta Arctic has not set up any transceivers for Atlanta Tower. And it makes sense, there's no real reason to. It's going to be on the airfield. It comes with a standard range, which you'll find in the documentation for the, for the new audio system. However, I can add more. So maybe I want to put uh, another transceiver at PDK for some reason. You can add up to five more transceivers yourself manually to the system. The very last thing I want to talk about is VATIS. So the ATIS system that is built into VRC will absolutely not work anymore after go live. So you'll need to be using VATIS or some other solution for putting your ATIS up. All you have to do, update VATIS to the latest version. Yes, I'm running the beta, but you'll just update to the latest version. Just as normal. And you're done. That really is all you need to do for the ATIS. So hopefully that's covered everything you need to know to control with VRC on the new audio for VATSIM system. If you have any questions, there'll be an extensive manual on the VATSIM website, which you can read about all of the different controller clients, the standalone client, and all of the pilot clients as well. You can always get in touch with us on the forums or talk to your facility engineer. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll speak to you on the network.